Well, good morning and welcome. This morning, welcome to those that are watching online. Great to have you with us. And for those that are here in our service this morning, may the Lord bless you today as we gather to worship, as we gather to seek the King of Kings. Let me just pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the ability to be able to gather in, in this place today. And Father, as we do so, we pray that, Lord, as we open our hearts to you, you would touch us afresh. We pray, Holy Spirit, come and fill this space. Fill the spaces where people are at home this morning, in their very front rooms or wherever they're watching this from today. We pray for an encounter with the living God. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let me read you a a verse of scripture as a way in this morning. It's from Psalm 19, and it says this. The heavens declare the glory of God. The skies proclaim the work of his hands. Day after day, they pour forth speech. Night after night, they reveal knowledge. That sense that as we look at creation around us, we see the glory of God revealed. His wonder, his majesty, and just the sense of awe, isn't it? You know, it was clear last night and being able to look up and and see the stars. Sometimes you can't do that because it can be quite cloudy, can't it? But it was just lovely to see that as I, I went out and picked up the the food that we've got next door and and just looking up and thinking, thank you, Lord. You're bigger than all that's around me, far bigger than I can see with the natural eye. That's our God. That's who we've come to worship this morning. So I'm going to invite you to stand if you're able. Um, We're going to sing a couple of songs together. Um, The first one we're going to sing is Indescribable. So let's stand together. From the highest of heights to the depths of the sea Creations revealing your majesty From the colors of fall to the fragrance of spring Every creature unique in the song that it sings All exclaiming Indescribable, uncontainable You place the stars in the sky and you know them by name You are amazing God All powerful, untamable, all struck to bring us the coolness of night None can fathom Indescribable, uncontainable You place the stars in the sky
times are tough. Thank you for being there when times are good as well. But Father, you are the one in which we can find comfort and peace. You're the one that stirs our very soul and we just say thank you, Father, for touching our lives. And we pray, Lord, that you might touch afresh again today. Lord, we declare that we need you, the author and the perfecter of our faith. 
maybe we've neglected you this week in some shape or form. Maybe we felt distant from you. But Lord, we just come right now and say, Father, would you stir in us? Would you enable your spirit to rise up within us? That we can worship you in spirit and in truth. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you that you understand. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. going to lead us in a time of incestory prayer. So I'm just going to invite Ruth to come and do that. Thank you. Our God is indescribable and uncontainable. He's amazing. Lord God, you're holy, holy, holy. You are above all gods. You made our universe. Your majesty is incredible. We bow in adoration at your feet, Lord. And one day, every knee will bow. Lord, we thank you for our Queen and for the tremendous commitment of service that she has made to this country. We pray that you will continue to guide her and you will, to right until the end of her life on here on earth, that she will finish well the race that was set before her. And as we pray for the royal family, we ask that each one will relate well to you, Father, and work hard at relating well to each other. Lord, we pray for our government. We know there are such difficulties and for them to sort out. Lord, we pray for the advisors and those who give them ideas and information which, the, which lead towards the strategies and the thinking. Lord, we pray that the Parliament will only pass laws that are in line with your will and your word. Lord, we've seen the pictures of the ambulances and the, the weariness of the NHS staff as they, they seek to overcome tremendous pressures. Lord, we thank you for the commitment to every doctor, nurse, and all the others who work in hospitals. Lord, thank you so much that if we become a patient, we know that we'll be cared for very well. But Lord, we pray for the issues of beds but being blocked because folks can't move on to care homes. So Lord, we pray about the ambulances that, uh, that, so that they won't have to queue outside and that they'll be released to go and help people who are in emergencies at home. So, Lord, we pray for more staff in the care sector so that more people can be cared for well in homes. Lord, it's a big problem for us here at the moment. But, Lord, help and guide those who, who work towards relieving those situations. And, Lord, thank you that you didn't leave us alone to struggle with difficult situations because you are the light of the world and you are the, uh, a light to our feet and a lamp to our path. But Lord, we pray about poverty 
in our nation. And there are different meanings of that. We have so many who have turned their backs on you, Jesus. May we reach out in love and grace and show them the joy that we as Christians have in our close relationship with you. May we not be fearful in sharing our faith and the blessings we have in spending time in your word and in prayer. Thank you, Lord, for your word. And may we be ready and willing to share it any moment of any day. For, Lord, you are in us and with us, and you guide us by your Holy Spirit. And we're so grateful to you, Lord. <coughs> also, we pray for our nation. Um, there are just so many under financial pressures. And we pray for wisdom and mercy and grace in the pen benefits offices and for food banks as they try to help. May real needs be met and may all of us live within our needs and not be tempted to buy things that we do not need. Lord, we pray for families in conflict and societies in conflict right across the world. May the walls of hostility come down. We pray for reconciliation and consideration of how others are hurting. Lord, whether in our nation or far across the world, may we all seek to live in peace, not war. Give us your peace, Lord, and may forgiveness flow in response to aggression. But Lord, we're so un uh, we know so well that there are adults and children dying because they have no food. Lord, the issues are so big, and we just lift them up to you and pray that you will have your way, Lord, and that mercy will flow. Um, and finally, we pray that as the, Christian light, that the Christmas lights go up in our towns and our cities, may we remember that Jesus, the light of the world, is the reason for the Christmas season. Lord, may our eyes be on you, and with thankfulness and praise, to our wonderful Saviour who came to save us and bring us to himself. And may we do our part in sharing the wonderful faith that we have in Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Ruth, for leading us in a time of prayer. We're going to continue to worship and uh, either to stand or sit, whatever you feel most comfortable to do. We're going to sing a couple of songs together, you know, worthy of every song, and you unravel me. Worthy of every song we could ever sing. Worthy ever bring worthy of every breath we could ever breathe we live for you Jesus the name above every other name Jesus the only one who could ever say ever breathe we live for you oh we live for you holy there is no one like you there is none beside you open up my eyes in wonder and show me who you are and fill me with your heart and Every other name 
Father, we thank you that we are children of the living God, that you have called us by name, that you know us completely, and that, Father, that you never turn your back on us. We praise you and thank you that you are our faithful God. Amen. Amen. We're going to uh, gather around God's word. Um, We have one verse of scripture that we're going to look at this morning, um, and we're continuing uh, with the teachings from the Sermon on the Mount. Um, So today we're going to be looking at the salt of the earth. I wonder, have you ever thought how many different uses salt has? There are a plethora of uses. Um, I suppose most of them will be found... We would use salt mostly within the kitchen, wouldn't we? To flavor food. You're probably going to cook with it later on today. If you're cooking potatoes, who puts salt with their potatoes? Adds a bit of flavor, doesn't it? With your vegetables. Do you put salt on your porridge? Does anybody have porridge? That's the old, Dave, that's the old Scottish way. And Peter, it's the old Scottish way of eating porridge, so I understand. You do need to cook, you do need to put 
salt in your porridge. This is true in the cooking process, but um, some people sprinkle it on the top. Not me, I'm afraid. I do cook, I do make salt, put salt in porridge. I can't get me words out this morning, but there we go. So I, I had a quick look at how many uses there were for, for salt. Um, and there are quite a few. Salt, when it comes to our health, is really important natural mineral that we need to have. But there are also warnings that we can have too much of a good thing. You can have too much salt, so you have to be careful. I remember my, um, my stepfather used to always go for the salt pot once his dinner was served. And he would cover his plate with salt. And I used to just think, oh, surely that spoiled the flavor. But he liked it. It takes all sorts, doesn't it? But salt is used for all sorts of things. Eileen, this is one is for you, for refreshing artificial flowers. Did you know that salt was used for that? She's smiling at me. She did. That's good. Um, also, cleaning uh, flower residue from vases with a toothbrush and salt. Restoring a sponge. Keeping w uh, wicker furniture looking as fresh as the day you bought it. You know, wicker furniture can go yellow, can't it? After a while, it's been in the sun, but it, you can use it to refresh it. Putting out a fire. Did you know you could use salt to put out a fire? There's some nods around the room. Deodorizing those smelly shoes. Salt can be used for that. So if you have to, um, you're told to leave your shoes outside the door, you know what to do. Grab the salt pot. And, sorry? Ice, Ice yes. Also for cleaning glassware, removing lipstick and uh, freshening up glasses, for cleaning fish tanks and preventing new towels from fading if you put a bit of salt in the wash with them. What else? Alternative to a mouthwash using salt. Exfoliating your skin. Well, you could go down to Exmouth Beach when the wind's blowing and have your skin <laughs> exfoliating there if you wish. Um, dealing with dandruff. Easing sore throats. Removing coffee, t coffee and tea stains on the inside of a, of a mug. Cleaning your fridge. Mopping up spills, including red wine. Um, making paths safe when it's icy. And many, many more. I could have been here another 20 minutes just giving you the list of uses for salt. But we haven't got time to do that this morning. I think you get the picture. Salt has many uses within our everyday lives, whether we realize it or not. And you'll find salt or sodium uh, within many um, of our ingredients, whether you have ready meals, whether you have food in tins, you will always find an element of sodium within our food. We went to uh, Lanzarote uh, a few years ago now, and we spotted how they produced salt from the sea. Um, where they, they scrape it out and dry it, and then hence you get sea salt. In the time of Jesus, salt was used as a preservative and for cooking. I don't believe that Jesus was talking about using salt as a preservative in the case of our passage this morning. To preserve, religious, to preserve the religious status or the sin of people wouldn't be on Jesus's agenda. I think that Jesus is talking about how salt brings flavor into our lives, just as it does when we use it for cooking or making porridge. Let's just read this verse. To, well, I'll read this verse to us um, from Matthew 5, verse 13. It says this, You are the salt of the earth. But if salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled underfoot. One of the key things that struck me is, is about our identity through the use of salt. The flavoring that Jesus is talking about here is about how salt affects our lives and affects the lives of others. Notice that Jesus says, you are the salt. You are the salt. So he's made it personal to us, those that believe. 
He does not say that you don't have salt. Jesus is telling us that we are salt. This is our characteristic and part of our identity as a Christian. This is in keeping with the Beatitudes that we've looked at previously. Jesus is describing the identity of those who belong to him and that we are in his kingdom. Jesus' disciples had an effect on people around them. This is a simple idea of being salt, that we have an effect on those around us, just as salt has an effect on the food that we eat. I want us to think about what that looks like for a minute. What does it look like to be salt of the earth? Consider that Jesus does not describe us as weapons on the earth. What I mean by this is that the way we affect the world is not in aggressive or angry or caustic kind of way. The world around us is continuing to shift, continuing to decay as it works further and further away from the principles of God. So how will we handle this? Jesus says that we are salt. What does that look like? So we cannot ignore what's happening around us. We cannot keep our salt to ourselves, as it were. But as salt, we're not to be explosive, but we're to have an ability to cause a simple reaction in those that we come against. That we bring a flavor to the world that nobody else can bring. Paul uses the idea of saltiness when he wrote to the church at Colossae in Colossians 4, verse 6. And it says this, Let your conversation be always full of grace, seasoned with salt, so that you may know how to answer everyone. Notice that the idea is of graciousness, of seasoning your speech with salt, which means that we have added graciousness to our words to what we say and how we say them. Therefore, we need to reflect on how the use of our language enables us to be salt to those around us. How are we demonstrating grace through our words and actions? Each of us has the ability to affect people and the way they listen to us and what we have to say to them. If you speak negatively about others, about situations, about people, you'll be seen as critical. And isn't that an an attitude that the world has? For example, it would be easy for me to talk about how poorly extra chiefs are playing at the moment. It would be really easy to do that. But we can all be armchair critics, can't we? We can all talk about our football teams or whatever sport you might follow, how poorly or how great they're doing. We always want to be the ref. You know, somebody said to me, well, we'd never we'd never miss a try. We'd never miss a penalty because we're always perfect, aren't we? When we're on the other side of the TV, as it were, or in the stands watching the game unfolding before us. It might be talking negatively about church. And what image does that portray to the world about the church of God? This would also include how we interact with others. Whether online through our Facebook or other social media platforms that you might use or not use in some cases. Are your conversations being seasoned with salt? If we are the salt of the earth, Jesus describes then our identity is tied in with his. It's an an unbreakable link. There was a reason why Jesus gave us the Beatitudes first at the beginning of Matthew 5. And this was to show us that we need to live our lives in a countercultural world. That we need to be different. That that call to stand out and, and to make a difference in a world that is struggling to find itself. 
that we need to be people who are meek and merciful, pure in heart and peacemakers. We're called to add a different dimension to our relationships with others, to be different in the world. The world is full of people who are self-centered. And Jesus asks us to be that salt of the world. We're called to speak and act in a way that helps the situation so that God is glorified. This means that we should react differently. We should speak words of grace, handle life situations differently to the way the world does. And our outlook on life should be different in the way we deal with others and the way that the world looks upon us. But Jesus went on to say about losing our saltiness. Not only did he say we are the salt of the earth, but he then went on to say about a warning. A warning in the second part of this verse about losing saltiness. And it says this, but if you lose, if you, but if the salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled underfoot. If salt has lost its taste, what good is it? It'd be no good in the porridge. It'd be no good in the cooking. It'd be a waste of time putting it in. Jesus is concerned that we lose our identity and our distinctiveness. He warns us that followers can lose the ability to be agents of transformation when our lives are not pure and righteous and we're, diff and we're not different from the world. By losing our taste, we're losing our effectiveness and therefore becoming worthless. When those who claim to be disciples fail to be pure, hungering for Jesus, being poor in spirit, showing meekness and being peacemakers, then our ability to change the world is damaged and cannot be restored. Jesus instructs us that we must not be like the world. To affect the world in a way that glorifies God is the call upon each of our lives. Being salt of the earth, it shows that we did not turn inward to live our lives in a little bubble, as it were. But Jesus has called us for that salt to be effective for those around us, to those we come in contact with. It may be that it's friends or neighbours. It may be those in the supermarket queue. It might be those waiting at the bus stop. Wherever you meet people, Jesus is saying that we are called to be salt, to savour and to flavour people's lives with another way, a better way, a way that enables us to share God's love in a countercultural way. But if we, if we don't do that, and if, if there is that sense of losing that saltiness, that we, we have no longer become any different from the world, that we do not stand out because our flavor is gone, then in many ways the enemy is won. But God has said, you are salt. Be careful not to be affected by salt. Salt loses its flavor when it becomes contaminated by other things. So if your salt, I took salt out of this salt pot this morning. But if this salt was contaminated with sand, for instance, it would be useless, wouldn't it? You'd have to throw it away. You wouldn't use it in your cooking, would you? So those potatoes you're looking forward to later, if your salt had sand in it, you wouldn't, be, you wouldn't be eating potatoes, would you? Or you just wouldn't use salt. And that's what Jesus is saying. He's saying here, look, if the salt in your life has become contaminated, get it sorted. Get it sorted because actually what Jesus has given us is something that enables us to flavor those around us. To make a distinctive difference. Paul said to uh, the wrote to the church at Romans in Romans six, verse thirteen says this: Do not offer your 
Do not offer the parts of your body to sin as instruments of wickedness, but rather offer yourselves to God as those who have been brought from death to life and offer parts of your body to him as instruments of righteousness. Instruments of righteousness. God wants to use the whole of us, not just the bit that we might turn up on a Sunday morning or yeah, the whole of us, the whole of our being, God wants to take hold of and use. Every member of our body is presented before God for his use. But if we've lost our saltiness, then we are no longer able to be used by God. We want to be his tools, don't we? We want to be used and, and valued by God, don't we? then therefore it is incumbent upon us to make sure that we retain our saltiness, our distinctiveness for Jesus. Whether that's through our hands, our feet, whether that's through our tongue. Peter pictured the, this idea in 1 Peter 4 uh, verse 11. If anyone speaks, he should do so as one speaking with the very words of God. If anyone serves, he should do it with the strength God provides. So that in all things, God may be praised through Jesus Christ. To him be the glory and power forever and ever. This is what it means to be given the calling to being the salt of the earth. So I think we need to ask the question, have we lost our saltiness? Have we lost that taste? Have we lost that, that sense of being different because of Jesus living in our lives? Are we transforming lives around us because Jesus is at work in our lives? Changing relationships by the way we speak. Salt makes food taste better as we've already established. But what is the point of salt if it no longer does that? want to encourage you to think about how we communicate to others whether that's verbally or non-verbally do people see a difference in us do they see the salt that that way that there is another way to live life not as the world does which will lead to destruction but a way that leads to life maybe you are, you, you're the type of person that posts messages on social media. And maybe you need to think about what you're posting. Are you being drawn into the negativity of what we find in social media? Or are you promoting positiveness within that? Are we speaking ways that discredit the gospel? Or are we embracing the identity that God has given us and making a difference? For you are the salt of the earth. That is your calling. That is what Jesus has spoken over us. We are the salt of the earth. He's called us to be distinctive, to make a difference. Are you making a difference? Let's pray. Father, Lord, we thank you for the challenge of being salt of the earth. Thank you, Lord, that, that in the midst of this passage that we've read, Lord, it warns us to maintain that, that level of distinctiveness in the world in which we live. That we would be salt that flavors, that enables people to see you in us. And we pray, O oh God, that where we have lost that distinctiveness, because for whatever reason, Lord, we pray that we might turn our faces to you again and to know the power of your love at work in us. Help us, Father, to be distinctive. Help us, Lord, to spread that salt abroad. Just as a sower sows seed in a field, may we sow salt everywhere we go to make that difference, to enable people to see you in us. That is our cry this morning, Lord. 
hear it, we pray. In Jesus' name we ask. Amen. I want to um, stop and, and pause for a moment, but I want to do that uh, through a song, if we may. Um, and it's Take My Life and Let It Be, Consecrated Lord to Thee. Father, that's our prayer today, that you would take our lives and use them for your glory. Use them for the extension of your kingdom. Use them that we might be distinctive enough that people would see Jesus in us. Lord, we long to make that difference in the world around us. We long to make that difference in our families maybe in our neighbors and our friends, in our acquaintances. So Lord, help us to be distinctive, we pray, for your glory, for the building of your kingdom, and for the establishing of your throne. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We're coming to a, a close of our service this morning. Um, I've chosen a last song for us to sing, which is, I raise a hallelujah. That sense that what God has done in us is incredible. And what he still wants to do is incredible. And that as we lift our voices to him, we're raising a hallelujah. We're declaring his sovereignty over all that we survey, I suppose. So let's stand and sing our closing hymn together. Perhaps you want to stand at home too as we do this. Thank you. I 
praise it, hallelujah, in the presence of my enemies, I raise it, hallelujah, louder than the unbelief, I raise it, hallelujah. Yes, Father, we thank you that the King is alive. He sits at the right hand of the Father. And we look forward to when he comes again. We thank you, Jesus, for the truth that sets us free. So, Father, as we have gathered this morning, we thank you that we've been able to do that, whether here physically or online. And we pray, O oh God, that you would continue 
to enable us to be flavoursome in the world, to make a difference for you, to be that salt wherever you lead us. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. We're in the habit of doing is closing with the grace, the words of the grace. So we're going to do that. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Amen. Thank you for joining us online and uh, we hope to see you soon. We've got some